Yeah, and that and that really is a direct argument against capitalism because all of these philosophers and it makes sense too because when you when you go up to a kid and you say, "Hey, do this and I'll give you a piece of candy." He's probably going to do it. So they had a general basic understanding of human psychology, but they didn't really understand the nitty-gritty of what goes on in someone's mind when they're given this right. incentive. Yeah, and that's why you see so many students today like as being you know, being a student, so many people that don't care and they don't actually have a direction of what they want to do. You know, there's a lot of it's lack of incentive. There's really not a reason except to make money, and that's not really that entertaining for them. Right. Exactly, yeah. And there's some people who have never understood that incentive of money. Yes, you need money to live, but it's not a requirement, and it's not, well, it's a requirement to a degree. Yeah. But, in, uh, our, in our society, it is. But yeah, exactly. It's but, unfortunate. Um, you know, that's a lot of people that grow up with that sole purpose and they'll go to school with the intention to make money. They don't care what they do as long as they make money. And right. that's that's disgusting. I mean, like, how could you plan your life to do something solely for something that's completely meaningless and give your soul to do it? Yeah. You know, like, do something that you at least enjoy. Who cares about how much money you get or where you go or what you do? Fuck. Right. And that, that really is probably what leads to most of the social problems that we have. Um, yeah, and they, now we've got this viral form of capitalism that just is swallowing everything whole, literally. Right. And it, you can see it. Cause people like hate learning now. Education oh, is something, it's like a taboo kind of thing now. It's interesting. Well, that's, I think we were talking about that earlier with reading. Um, you know, like if whatever experiences you first had as a young child, it's, your brain is going to constantly go back to those first memories. So if your memories of learning as a child sucked, it's not. It's going to be hard to break those habits, especially if you have shitty teacher after shitty teacher. Right. Yeah. If you actually, you know, if we had an education system that actually cared about the kids, cared about their well-being and their social development and everything, then you would have kids who actually cared and who were creative and explorative and didn't just do A to B to get out of school so they can do whatever the hell they want, whether it be get married, have a kid, and and that's that's a lot of people. You know, they get a house, get a job, have a kid, and that's the end of life. Like that's yeah, it, it's it's a everything. miserable existence. Yeah, it can't be everything yeah. exactly. Um, and I think the biggest point is when you hear like Isaac Newton say, "Standing on the soldiers of shoulders of giants." Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Standing on the shoulders of giants. I mean, we're gonna have very small giants to stand on if we keep going down this path. Um, there's people that die. You know, they pass away with such limited knowledge of of what's really happening. I don't see how that in any way contributed to what humans are really striving for, and in many yeah. senses of the word. <laughs> well, um, I've, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Like One of the biggest endeavors of, of humanity is to make sure that every generation that comes after yours is better. That should be the goal. Every generation that comes after your generation right. should be smarter, should be better physically, mentally, spiritually, more, more prepared. Of and course. It, if we were if we were actually concentrated and we cared about that, I mean, our species in general would would light within four or five generations would be light years. It wouldn't even be recognizable from oh, yeah. from people of past generations, you know. Yeah, and in many ways, the the world in which we live in is holding us back. So I guess we'll uh, jump over to the subject of Iran. Uh, obviously, a fairly big subject for a while now. Uh, ongoing nuclear crisis. Although the majority of the news we're getting is is. A lot of propaganda from the states in Israel, so uh, gotta take everything with a grain of salt. But uh, for more modern topic of uh, the sanctions that are going on now, I think uh, Pat, you had something going on with that. Yeah, um, on Friday, March 30th, Obama was talking about these sanctions on Iran, and he mentions that even though he recognizes the oil supply is tight, and you know internationally, we're still going to be trying to find other sources, and a lot of our investors have dropped out, and there's also going to be a European embargo on that starting at the same time. And this is just a classic example of how we again just provoke certain situations for international conflict and we instigate these kind of things and we have a classic history of doing such activities. Hey, look at the uh, GOP candidate Mitt Romney the other day we were talking about Obama's little slip up with Medvedev not so long ago and in his, two seconds later he mentions how uh, Russia is United States is politic number one political enemy, like. <laughs> yeah, that guy. That guy's a complete idiot, and I also love that he's getting all this slack from all these dog owners for having uh, the dog on the top of his car. 
That's really hilarious. Oh yeah, yeah. dude. He he said he was ma- doing a road trip up to Canada and they had they didn't have enough oh space for the dog, so they put him on the roof. Ridiculous. And uh, <laughs> at one point, the dog took a dookie on the top of the roof and it slid <laughs> off the <laughs> slid off the edge. And his kids uh, they had to pull over and wash it off. And Mitt Romney just puts the dog right back up on the roof and keeps going. <laughs> what the so, heck? so the guy's That's divorced nuts. from reality in every which nuts. way and he told this story um to try to relate to voters as if the common voter would partake in tying their dog on top of the roof of their car gingrich however um is pretty much irrelevant at this point because he's basically he's laying off a lot of his uh, staff and stuff and he's come coming out back. he's come out and said that romney was the likely um Candidate, candidate for yeah right for the GOP so so at this point Gingrich is irrelevant but I think Paul is Paul's gonna stay in the race no matter what obviously so um, Paul 2012 <laughs> I think it's good that he's staying in the race though because his point of view is honestly the most rational of all of them um, even though his economic policy kind of makes my head spin yeah there's some things to, it's hard to yeah it's not a case with. of lesser of Lesser of, yeah, lesser of five evils or whatever yeah. the hell yeah. we're at now. It was at the beginning of the race. It was the lesser of nine evils. Yes, yeah, yeah, got a I mean, whole. He'd run Paul's really well intentioned, and he's definitely got some some ideas that need to take effect. But uh, yeah, right. Some of the things are definitely risque, at, at uh, to say the least. Yeah, in my ideal world, I I would love to see Paul versus Obama, just because I would love to see Paul trash Obama in all the ways that. You know, because Paul in many ways is more left than Obama in, in many, many ways. Well, I think it's um, a, I think it's important to mention that the way we feel it's risky, it's it's not in the sense that most media would consider it and how his international policy is. That's what most people would say. But honestly, it's obviously due to, his, like Dave said, his economic policy. It's just quite the opposite of what mm-hmm. most media would portray it to be. Because there's a total flip use of how, what's his controversy is. Right, yeah, and then you got the subject of the media there with uh, with Ron Paul, like at the beginning of the coverage, how they weren't even mentioning his name, and and now it's the popular vote is barely even mentioned when you when you're talking about uh, you know these uh, state caucuses and stuff. Right. Well, you can't. You kind of have to forgive them there because in the end, I mean, it's kind of irrelevant because we have this stupid system of, uh, or in my in my opinion, stupid system of electoral college. Such And the, the same thing with voting on Tuesday, blah, 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 all of this stupid <laughs> stuff. It's not required in this day and age, but we do it because of tradition. Um, um, and then Santorum, the last one, uh, is like your bedroom big brother. It's, it's interesting because all these people advocate a free market, and then like once you get into your bedroom, uh, nothing is free, and everything is scrutinized, and... Uh, you're not allowed to do certain things. Well, not to mention the uh, heavy, heavy underlying uh, religious views of, of the GOP leaders and stuff, and that's that's scary enough as as you know the uh, the Eastern world having extremist Muslim leaders as having extremist Christian leaders here right. in the in the West. I mean, we've got a lot of power here, and to have that in the mind of someone who, like you said, is divorced from reality, um, religion doesn't help that at all, in my view, at least. Right. Um, yeah, in modern politics, it's now it's basically it should be completely ignored. yeah exactly people are just completely ignored if you're not if you're not religiously affiliated or if you're it shouldn't be a question you yeah. shouldn't ask it in exactly. debates they they shouldn't be an issue on the world stage at all you know yeah it shouldn't be part of our government yeah I completely agree that they then feel that they should be intruding in certain areas of people's lives like you're talking about. When, whether it be in the bedroom with their, their marriage, if they, you know, depending on if they're bisexual or gay or transgender or whatever, as if that were to matter to these people, as if they have the authority to make choices over these people, you know? Right, and just because, it's insane. Just it's because you have a belief doesn't mean the rest. And the worst argument I hear from them is that they're trying to say that the United States is a Christian nation. No politician should ever have that kind of idea. But anyway, just to wrap it up, uh, if you want to hear more in-depth discussions, uh, you can see them on our second channel. Um, We'll have relevant links to all the stories in this episode and to our other channel uh, below. And uh, if you like this and want to hear more as well as contribute to future discussion, make sure you uh, hit the subscribe button. Um, Make sure you see what's going on. Uh, Thanks for listening and peace.